Okay. Um, I think it's I'm not like sorry. it's three thirty. All, right, All right. So, welcome everyone who decided to join us on this very auspicious Saturday. This is Furry YouTube Live. Yay! We're gonna talk about YouTube and stuff and how to do it in a way that's probably right. I assume it's right. We've been doing it for a while now. Yeah. If it's not right, we've been wrong for years. So. <laughs> and it works. It works for the most part. Anyway, um, so who are we? You might not recognize me because most of my suits are, most of my suits, most of my videos are all fluffy and stuff. I am Myron the Fluffy. I am the red panda-y looking uh, first suit who does videos on, you know, topics about the fandoms and discussions and tutorials and I feel like we should close that door. Um, so Beagle, you, no, you describe who you are, I will close this door. Hey guys, I'm Beagle in red. Um, this is how I look in all my videos, so if you don't recognize me, you probably don't watch my channel, which is okay. But I hope you guys do by the end of this panel. You have a YouTube channel? Yeah. I have, What's a YouTube? He, he does make the videos, occasionally. You know, about fries and yeah. and other furry things. Panera Bread, a lot of Panera Bread, in case the hat didn't tip you off. Don't you mean Panera Bread? Oh my god, please stop. That's for a future video. <laughs> there are children, these weapons grade puns, you're gonna have to t Anyway. So yeah, we do the YouTube, we make the videos. I'm gonna give you a general roadmap of what the heck we're gonna talk about here in this little panel. So we're gonna go over some hardware, what you need to actually make your videos, cameras, microphones, all that fun stuff. Spoiler alert, you don't really need much to make videos. Uh, editing, how to actually cut together those videos into something that resembles a finished product. Uh, promotion, how to get your name out there doesn't matter if you make a video if no one watches it. So how do you get your videos out there? How do you get people to watch them? Uh, video topics, what are you even going to record? Uh, channel setup, how to actually set up your YouTube channel and make it look pretty and professional. And then we're gonna top it all off with a Q&A. We're gonna take your questions if you have any of them. Hopefully you do because we don't have enough material to cover a full hour. So... Let's move on into hardware. So I'll start off here. I'm going to talk about cameras. So cameras, the quick and dirty of it is if it can record your pretty, pretty face, it'll work for YouTube. At the bare minimum, use a webcam. Use your smartphone. Smartphones are actually getting ridiculously good as cameras nowadays to the point where I bought a DSLR specifically for recording video and then a year later bought that Smartphone that's sitting right there. I use that smartphone to record my video because it takes better video But the gist is if you can if it can record your face use it now Obviously there are really nice cameras that you can use you can go out to your local electronics store and buy a thousand dollar camera And that will look pretty and that will look good and it increases your production value, but it's not entirely necessary So for microphones if you want to discuss it real quick. I think you're the one with the microphone. Am I the one with microphones? Oh, yeah I'm the audiophile I keep forgetting. Microphones, kind of the same general story as cameras. If it can record your pretty, pretty voice, it'll work. Most cameras come with a microphone. So you can usually just use the audio off of that. However, if you want to get fancy with your audio, you can switch to a lapel mic, like I've got down in the corner there. And those are those fun things that you see on like newscasters and interviewers where they're clipped to your shirt right here and they pick up your voice while hopefully not picking up all the other stuff in your environment. Or you can use like a hot shoe, hot foot mount, I can't remember the exact term for it, but the, the kind of microphones that sit on the top of your camera and actually plug into your camera. Or you can be like me and use what should be used for a, a desktop computer. This is a Yeti or a blue Yeti microphone. You can use this to record. Just like cameras, you can use whatever works for you. And that's kind of the gist of a lot of this stuff. If it works for you, use it. The biggest furry YouTuber names, you'd be surprised how low cost a lot of their solutions, a lot of their, their different hardware needs are. It's actually pretty impressive. Um, so for lighting, generally speaking, try and get good light on yourself. Uh, if you can do that naturally, wonderful. If you can't, you can use a ring light, you can use tent lights. Uh, there's a lot of different lighting tools you can use, but the general story is if your camera can't pick you up, it doesn't matter. 
So try and get as much light on you as possible. Literally, the more light you can get on your face, the better, because your camera will adjust to the light values and it'll only look better. And then as far as actual setup. So basically, where does everything go? Um, most importantly, lighting is going to be the difference between everyone being able to see like a cute fursuit face or a big black mask. So lights should be in front of you and try not to have um, being backlit, which is when you have like an open window or a lamp or something behind you because that will cause the shadow to be on your face. So lights in front, up, or if you have like, if you're just using room lights, just make sure it's going down on your face and not behind you. Mics. Um, I mean, yeah, you want your mic to be in a, in, in front of you, yeah, usually. Yeah, but um, <laughs> you might not want it to be in view, so you can like yes. hide it, like maybe just on the side under your table. Mm -hmm. Just be inconspicuous to that. Be inconspicuous, yeah. And then cameras, obviously you want a good angle on yourself. Generally speaking, don't shoot from below. So if you have a camera, make sure it is at the, at, at the worst pointing down on you, but generally you want it to be about eye level. Unless you're trying to get a very specific effect of like a down. So it's also a good idea to just like preview your setup before you start filming. Mm -hmm. So you don't like actually cut off the top of your head the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> or you're out of focus. Yeah. Do a little test shot and, and actually review it because I have been lazy and had to throw out entire videos because I go to edit and I'm like, oh, I'm totally out of focus. I am just a big blurry mess. <laughs> So setup is important. You, you gotta you gotta frame your videos properly, or else they might not come out the way you'd like them. So editing. So I'll just run over quickly um, just some programs for editing, and then you can kind of go into some of the techniques. So programs. The the theme of this whole presentation is whatever works for you. But as far as programs that a lot of the fur YouTubers use. Almost unanimously, people use uh, Adobe Premiere Pro, uh, but I know a couple of people use Sony Vegas. I know one person who used Window Movie Maker. You can really, if it can cut together video clips, it'll work. You're, the whole point of, of the program that you're using is to take the video that you brought in, be able to chop out the parts that are garbage, because you will inevitably stumble over your own words. And then if you can do the added bonus of throwing in effects and text and all sorts of fun stuff, that's great, but that's not entirely necessary. So really just anything that can put your stuff together. Mm -hmm. But uh, techniques. If you want to go to the next slide for oh. techniques. Techniques. So cutting is pretty much synonymous with editing. At the moment, it's going to be like the main thing that you do with your videos because a raw file is probably going to be like 30 minutes for <laughs> you could cut that down to a five minute video. Oh yeah. Like cutting out all the silent times, like you're like getting ready to switch points. You're just like flubs. Yeah, all the broken up grammars. Or you just trip over your words real yeah. bad. Oh, yeah, the, the, the top picture is actually a good example of tripping over words. So um, I am bad at talking live on camera. I stutter a lot, pause a lot between my words. So I don't know if you can really see well on the, on the slide, but those six clips under that red line. That's one sentence I pieced together from like a 20 second clip into one sentence. Um, so like, if you're, if you're bad at talking or you ramble a lot like me, um, just pick the right words to put together. Yeah. And Editing is your lifesaver. It yeah. can take a 30 minute rambly, questionable garbage uh, argument and turn it into a nice, concise, easily followable um, discussion. So editing is entirely your friend. At the very least, try and cut out the, the empty dead air gaps and the flubs, but you can also do some fun stuff like uh, right here where Beagle just poof, magically appears due to the magic of jump cuts and two people who were trying to be as steady as possible. Uh, I remember that. There was like a solid couple seconds mm -hmm. where I was like, don't move at all. Don't move at all, it'll ruin the jump cut. <laughs> all righty. So, you want to do music? music and copyright. So, nobody w wants to watch a, just a pure silent video of you talking with some awkward background noises, maybe. And then, so, you want to add some music to your videos, but you probably hear a lot about copyright issues with YouTube, and it's becoming increasingly difficult to find usable audio. You might just randomly get slapped with a copyright notice on your video. Bam. 
Yeah. I've gotten hit with a few of them. So if you're lucky, they might Whoops. just say, oh, you can't monetize this video. If you're unlucky, they'll be like, we're going to take your video down, give you a strike, and take down your whole channel if you do this oh, ever again. It's so it, you have to be really careful with what kind of music you use. Um, a good way to actually test in advance is to upload video, like just a video with the audio you're planning on using, and see if YouTube strikes it down immediately. Yeah. Uh, but if you want to be more careful, there's a lot of places where you can get good um, usable music on YouTube that doesn't copyright infringe. There's an audio library that they offer, and then there's a couple of different channels like No Copyright Sound and some other places where they'll offer music, and all you have to do is throw a, a little link to them in the description. And yeah, stuff. so YouTube's own resources are very useful, like the audio library we just mentioned. It has a, like hundreds or thousands of free tracks you oh, can use, wow. and you can sort it by um, genre, mood, instruments, just to like find something that fits your video. Yeah, it's pretty easy to find something that if you know you have a happy, upbeat, um, hello? If you have a happy, upbeat video, just type in, in, in right here, I'll even use this little mouse cursor. In the mood, you can just put in upbeat. They have a whole section for that. It's all really fun, happy, yay music. You know, if you have a dramatic moment, oh, you can look, you know, mood, drama, duration, real short for like a little dramatic sting, you know, a little short clip of, of audio to accent a point. It's, I feel like it's one of the lesser known like secrets because I've, I've talked to people who have like multiple, multiple thousands of subs and they're like, wait, there's an audio library? And you're like, mm -hmm. oh boy, have I got news for you. <laughs> Another thing that the uh, um, YouTube can has like a, I think a record of is if you want to use a copyrighted song, you can actually look up the rights to that song if you can use it. Because some some songs they do let you use it in videos for free. They just might have like certain restrictions, like you can't monetize it, or there will be certain ads on your video. But it doesn't mean everything's off limits. Yeah, like I know uh, Nintendo Music. If you use anything from any Nintendo game, they will remove the advertising option for your video so you can't put any advertisements on it but your video will still have advertisements it's just all the revenue will go to nintendo but i mean you know the ad bunny is pretty eh, so yeah. <laughs> i i like to use nintendo music because it's like nostalgic and everyone loves it and i love it because i'm a nintendo child but point is there's a lot of places to get your music but you also have to be very careful uh, let's move on here all right so we're going to move on to good old promotion. How do you get your videos? How do you get your name out there? Because it doesn't matter if you make a video, if no one watches it, then you're basically talking to an inanimate object. So um, one of the good places to start on uh, promotion is social media, is Twitter, Facebook, Amino, wherever you can get your name out that people will see it, good places to start. Um, like I, for example, whenever I put out a video, I'll post it on Twitter, I'll post it on Amino, I occasionally post it on Facebook if I'm remembering because I don't go on Facebook very much. But the point is, is to, to let everyone know that, hey, I made this new shiny video, woo, you should all watch it. <laughs> get your name out. Uh, you have so uh, another way to get your name out on YouTube to get other people to watch your videos is doing collaborations, which is basically when two YouTubers get together and they share an audience. Kind of like this. Yeah. In a weird way. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically you're, you're like trading audiences with the other person. Like people who only watch one person are now like they see this other person and they're like, oh, maybe they make similar contents to the first person I watch. I want to see what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and then a good, good way to, uh, and this kind of falls into promotion, but your thumbnails. When people are browsing YouTube and they come across your video, they're gonna read the title, they're gonna read the, th or they're gonna look at the thumbnail. And the thumbnail is that little picture down in the corner that's kind of supposed to incorporate what your video is about. So you don't wanna get super like clickbaity and like flashy, ah, oh, watch this, this is really, but you do wanna have an attractive design that will get people to both kind of quickly understand maybe what this video is about as well as actually drawing them in to watch the video to actually be interested in clicking on your link and clicking on your video. Yeah, um, as for clickbait, I wrote question mark because people talk about that a lot, but I, I find it generally, um, try to be honest with your thumbnails. Like, if you're gonna make like, getting banned from Las Vegas, like Nas Haina, he actually went to Las Vegas and got banned. So <laughs> he, he has the right to use a thumbnail like that. 
Oh boy, but if, you're, if your video is like, yay, first shooting around MFF, and you've got yeah, like a picture of yourself, and then you like Photoshop in like a million different popular furries and fursuits and stuff, and the video is just you walking around MFF going for 10 minutes, that's kind of disingenuous in some regard, because you're, you're promising people one thing and then delivering them a totally different thing. And that's where you get into the bad. That, that's where you get into what everyone kind of calls click, like clickbait. Mm -hmm. Like when you're when you're giving off a false impression with your thumbnail. Yeah, it kind of leaves a negative impression in your channel. Yeah, and then they won't come back for more. Even if you, even if you, you know, come out with another video like oh, first squared, and you put in pictures of popular fairies there, and you actually did go and interact with them, someone's gonna look at that thumbnail and be like, well, his last video, he just, he didn't do any of that. So, so you just want to stay. You want to stay honest, but definitely kind of talk yourself up. You know, give yourself something attractive and, and interesting and visually appealing for people to actually want to click on. Alrighty. Moving along in a good clip. All right. Video topics. So you have to make videos. They have to be about something. You can't just set up a camera and go. They actually have to have some, some material and some substance to them. And when you're starting out, this is when it can be both the easiest and the hardest. The easiest way to start out is to literally just start out with a your first video. Just a, hey guys, this is what my channel is generally going to be about. This is what we're generally going to do. Stick around and, and you know, this is what I'm going to do. Yay, come back. Um, but from then on out, you kind of have to start thinking of actual topics to fill your videos uh, with. So uh, just going down the list of things that we have, we'll talk more in depth about each of them, but we got topical videos, interactive, music, tutorials, skits, and live streaming, which is sort of its own category. Mm -hmm. Topical videos are basically you pick a topic and you talk about it, and usually it's going to be something that's relevant, interesting, that you think your viewers will enjoy. Yeah, so like a topical video right now. 50 reasons why you shouldn't eat Tide Pods. Something that's actually relevant nowadays that has some real impact on something that's very prevalent and popular in the furry fandom as a whole. <laughs> I feel like you just need one. Just, just One would think. One would think. Um, <laughs> like, if you want a, um, a good example of a topical channel, Pokari Ru is, uh, she does a lot of um, topical videos, like her bottle show is basically every week is a new topic. Like she will talk about fursuit financing and budgeting and she is really good at what she does so she can make finances interesting for a furry audience. <laughs> Which is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> she can make talking about money fun. So um, interactive videos are basically, um, they're, they're pretty popular. Like Q and A's, like your audience gets to be in the video and that usually draws a lot of attraction and mm -hmm. attention to you, so. Yeah, the whole idea of an interactive video is you're putting out something that pulls your audience in. Like Beagle said, a Q and A. If you ask your audience questions and then they answer, you can even do this in the form of a live stream if you want to get real interactive. But um, sorry, <laughs> choked over my own words. But yeah, interactive uh, videos really help you with crowd engagement, with audience engagement, and if you're able to actually take what the audience says and pull it into your video, it makes them feel appreciated because you do appreciate them. They're your audience. They're the reason why you're doing this all. So giving them that warm, fuzzy feeling makes them come back and watch more videos, which is your end goal. <laughs> so music videos. I don't music, so... Yeah, I don't... No, music videos is supposed to be like... <laughs> no, I don't think either of us do it, but that would be like fursuit dancing or con videos with good music stuff. These are like um, pretty cinematic usually. Yeah. It's less about yourself, more about um, either like the thing you show, like a con video or dancing. Mm -hmm. Unless you're NOS and you just have an electric keyboard and you just do 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 do, do oh, yeah. video camera. It's an interesting character. Mm -hmm. All right. Tutorials and discussions. This is kind of my forte because my channel is like 90% tutorials and discussions and 10% me making a fool of myself uh, in said tutorials and discussions. But uh, the whole idea of if you're going to be a, like a tutorial or discussion suitor, YouTuber, whatever, um, first most important thing about those kind of videos is confidence in what you're saying. Because if you're not confident in, in the in the tutorial or whatever you're talking about, why should anyone take your word as law? Why should anyone like think that you actually know what you're talking about? And second off, this can actually help with your confidence in some regard is giving them a reason for why you should be listened to. It's almost like a, like a vocal resume in a sense. If you're talking about, 
like I have a, a fursuiting 101 pan, or um, set of videos and I kind of describe that yes I've been fursuiting for many years I have like a thousand hours in suit and when people see hey yeah this person actually knows what they're talking about they're more likely to both listen to your videos and suggest them to other people because if they think that you're right then and, and someone else comes up to them with a question hey look there's this w wonderful video that describes exactly what your question is you should just watch this instead um skits so skits you're good on the these skits. are typically collabs with other people but you can do it with yourself <laughs> these are basically just like um short little skits um like yeah, little acting scenarios usually like little, little scenes little short stories yeah, almost little stories that you write out it's fun to do with friends you can also do it with yourself like i know a lot of um youtubers like majira and vix they will do like a one character in first suit, the other character out of first suit, and kind of cut back and forth between camera angles. But Isn't yeah, that like a fun way to like express your persona's character out to the audience. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then with streaming, all you need for streaming really is a webcam with a microphone and good internet. And good internet. Oh God, in America, that's sometimes really hard. But uh, streaming, you can do a, a whole lot of things. You can do fursuit construction you can play video games you can play music you can pretty much anything like live action that people would watch in the real world hey you can stream it and you can reach an even bigger audience um so it's 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 a real great way it's almost an interactive video in itself it's a way to to get out and talk to the audience uh, to your your viewers themselves because they'll tune in they'll watch and you can you know have some fun with them in my case i play a bunch of silly games um sometimes with my viewers and it's just a real fun way to almost give back to them, like, yeah, we're going to play some games. It's going to be fun. Like, let's have some fun. <laughs> and they can sometimes break up if you have, like, in my case, I'm a lot of tutorials and discussions. Being able to kind of break up my videos with some fun streams, uh, I can kind of hit another different audience uh, in a different respect. Also, streaming is a good way just to, like, have content when you're out of ideas because you don't really need to plan anything because you just go with the flow. Yeah. I mean, if you're a scar, you literally go with the flow. Oh, yeah. He just turns on a camera and goes for it. Anyone with yesterday's YouTube panel, that's... that's <laughs> oh, it's bad. How a stream could go. Yeah. If any of, were any of you at the uh, furry YouTuber meetup... <laughs> yeah, so you two know exactly how much that just... <laughs> it was good. It was fun, but it was weird. Alrighty, let's let's move on here a little bit. Channel setup, actually setting up your channel because you can't. I mean, you couldn't could just create a channel and go for it, but if you have like a nice banner, nice uh, assets, and and a uh, nice name and all that other fun stuff, it makes your channel look that much more professional and and gives people a reason to actually, you know, listen to what you're saying. So yeah, um, just naming your channel. Like, would, do you want it just to be a character's name, or do you want to like kind of have like a little production? company behind your name or something mm -hmm. usually it's good to pick something uh catchy easy to say unique so when someone says like says your name people know exactly what you're talking about yeah you don't want to have a name like you know xx furry youtuber 1735 something that doesn't really roll off the tongue mm -hmm. very well um you want it to be easy for people to just type into a search bar you know if if I walk up to you and I'm like, oh yeah, I, I saw this video from furry YouTuber 4047, and you'd be like, what? Sorry, I'm not gonna remember that, that's too much. But if someone walks up to you like, hey, I saw this video from Beagle in Red. Easy, Beagle in Red, you just type that right in. If you wanna have a name that's mm -hmm. both easy to remember, flashy, catches someone's eye, and even in some regards, kind of reflects what you're gonna be doing. See, if anyone knows um, Fox Veritas, he's a furry YouTuber. His channel name used to be Like a Fox Productions. It's a bit long, so uh, this year he changed it to Fox Films, so it's like a two-word, easy, memorable. Yep. Um, so something you can do to make your channel look really nice and fancy and professional is to have a nice icon, a nice banner. So on your actual YouTube main page, you're going to have a big old banner along the top. Like that. Like this, like the for a YouTuber podcast right here. But the whole point of this banner is it's it's almost like a uh, a visual representation of what your channel is going to be about in some regard. Like for my channel, I have just a, a little piece of art of my character, and then it's got like a little you know three little bullet points of basically what I do, and you know a bunch of art and flashy stuff to make it look all pretty. But the whole idea is that if someone clicks on my channel, they can look at that banner and go, oh okay. I'd 
like I generally know what this person's about with his videos. Um, and then your icons kind of along the same line, although it's less about describing your channel and more about just being a, a, a noticeable, recognizable, fun little uh, depiction of yourself. So default video upload options. These are kind of important to set before you make any videos. Um, I don't know if it defaults to private, but on the off chance that your defaults are not set to upload your videos as private, it can be kind of awkward when you upload a video that has some ridiculous name on the file name. And so what hits your, your page is final cut video furry blah, 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 dot AVI instead of the nice short video name that you actually had planned out. So you want to make sure and actually set up your video default upload options before you start uploading your videos so that, you, I mean, the most important one is just that it uploads as private so that you can make all the YouTube side changes and touch-ups and edits before you, they actually go live. So uploading a video can typically take like a couple minutes up to an hour depending on the video. So just use that time, make sure your title's correct, your description, and if you want to like post any links to your social media, all that stuff. and. If you want to monetize your video, you can also do that there because I know the default setting is set to off. Yeah. So uh, if you want the ad revenue, remember to turn that on when you upload your video so you get that initial rush of views counted. Yep. Get all that wonderful YouTube money. <laughs> Non-existent nowadays, though. Monetization. Next oh. topic. <laughs> yep. All right. And the last thing we'll talk about is social media accounts and, and uh, contacts. So we kind of went over social medias a little bit earlier, but when you're setting up your channel, there's a lot of fun, fun places to throw in your Twitter, your FA, your whatever other social media or website that you have for your content. This is a good way to get people to go follow you on Twitter or follow you on Facebook or something along the lines of that. And then they can get, you know, bombarded with the news of your videos from two sources instead of one, which means they might actually view your video. Yeah. <laughs> um, but moving on. Oh. I thought it was when we had something on monetization. Well, whatever. We're going to talk about uh, monetization and the fun, fun, sad reality that yeah. is monetization. Yeah, wah, wah is a good way to describe it. So monetization now, it used to be just, uh, I think it was you have a thousand subscribers and you can monetize your videos. Now it's you have to have a thousand subscribers and... 40 hours of view time. 40,000 hours of view time. Um, it's kind of ridiculous. It's understandable. Uh, funny, the funny way is a really good way around that is to, uh, do like long, long streams because if you take all of my non streams, like view time and put them together, it's like a 10th of what my like four streams are together. It's a little bit ridiculous. So that's actually kind of a good little workaround if you want to get those view hours high enough to, to monetize. But in short, I mean, if you're going for money with furry YouTube, you, I hate saying you're getting into it for the wrong reason because everyone kind of has their own reason for getting into furry YouTube, but just know that until you get massive, you will not break even. Like, the amount of ad revenue that I get from videos is like a couple bucks a month. It's pretty non-existent. So you have to kind of reach out to like external revenue sources, Patreon and merchandise and all that fun stuff to actually get any sort of reasonable money. Yeah, if you're like under the forty thousand, yeah, the four thousand hour, it's forty or forty. Yeah, it's a lot under that view count, <laughs> and then you're upset you can't monetize. You're really not missing much because that all that is gonna amount to just like a, maybe ten bucks yeah, in I, ad revenue. All that work for nothing. I, yeah, I think so. uh, who was it? Odin Wolf was telling me he's a, uh, another furry YouTuber. He was telling me how he had a video that had seventy five thousand views, and the ad revenue he got on it was four dollars. What? Four dollars? Yeah. And 75,000 views on a YouTube video is pretty much, like, it's, that's really high. I think my highest one is, like, 6,500, but I'm I'm pretty, like, low on average, so, eh. Yeah, YouTube revenue is honestly just, like, a high five. Like It's like, like, yay, you did it, here's a one. It's, yeah. Whee! It's like, thank, thank you? But, um, also they won't even pay, you, pay out to you until you hit $100 on your revenue, so... The, the gist of it is ad revenue, forget about it. It's it's mostly useless. Oh, hey, that's Ascari in the back. He also does the YouTube. Oh, I, we didn't ask in the beginning. How many people out there have or run a YouTube channel? Eh, two. Eh? Eh, I'll count it. Non-human ones, apparently more popular. 
<laughs> Go figure. Um, so I'm assuming the rest of you are either interested in starting yours or just interested in YouTube as a whole, just curious about it for the most part. All right, cool. Well, good. Um, I think we're pretty much done with the stuff that we have prepped, so we're just going to move into questions. Okay, how, what are we it's on four time? Four o'clock. It's four o'clock? Yeah. Okay, so we went 30 minutes. That's right. good. Um, I'm just going to quickly check my phone to make sure it's actually still recording. Um, but if you have any questions, put them pause up. <laughs> my videos never go like as far as recording time never go over about 25 minutes so I'm not actually sure when that thing will cut off all right questions anyone have any questions about YouTube as a whole I've even got a computer in front of me so I can show you things um, on the actual site yes it's a good question I think the general uh, the generally accepted convention is for every minute of video that you have, it's gonna take about an hour to edit. Um, it'll, it might go faster if you're more skilled. It might go slower if you're if you just got a lot of effects and things to throw in. Obviously, it really depends on the video. Like um, certain videos where you don't have a bunch of crazy effects and you're just cutting video together. I mean, I've I've put together a five minute video in forty five minutes, but then again, I've also had a three minute video take me. 13 hours. Mm -hmm. See, the most edit. like the most basic form of editing is just playing back your video, finding out where you want the cut. So, you're probably going to have to like watch through the whole raw footage in mm -hmm. itself and then go back and yeah. know what you're I mean, generally it's going to be you're going to have a couple of steps. You're going to watch through your video, do a rough cut to cut out most of the, the garbage, then kind of go through and maybe fine fine pick through the stuff and actually get your cuts a little bit more uh, clean. And then you add in the effects, and you add in your intro and your outro, and and all this other fun stuff. And so all that other stuff can take a lot of time, depending on what you're using. Uh, yeah, it can get kind of lengthy. But don't let that scare you away. I mean, just doing a, a simple cut job is like 90% of what makes a good video. So if you can just cut out all the dead airtime and all the ums and ahs and word flubs. You're 90% of the way there. You, the last 10% is the cherry on top of your Sunday. Questions? Saw your hand first. I know there's cases where, from the Majora Strawberries case, uh, his entire channel is not able to be monetized. So in that regard, is that like a rarity or is that kind of somewhat common? That's that's a real rarity. I think he's the only person yeah. I know. His, his his case is really weird because he's contacted YouTube like a million times, and even they're they, I don't know they if they've ever given him a straight him answer. They they're basically their answer was you have violated our terms, but we can't tell you what you did because it's against our privacy rules. It's and like, that happened very privacy? very early on channel. in his channel, like when he was at like ten thousand or ish. Yeah, I think that's why he streams on a secondary channel now because on that one at least he can do the super chats and all that other fun stuff. Wait, yeah. does he not get a play button then? No. No. What? He's yeah. still fighting that. He's still fighting that's that. Ridiculous. It's it's really dumb. He's he's angry about it. He's been angry mm -hmm. about that for a long time. So yeah, that is a that is a tender subject. I wonder if he should lawyer up or something. Uh, I mean, for YouTube, it's like. I'm at the end of the day, they they're in they they could delete everyone's account if they wanted to. It's their platform, so that you, all you can do is try and argue with them. And if they say no, take it to Vimeo or something. I don't know. <laughs> Make another channel. There, there, there's a good question. I know this is a YouTube channel, but what do you think about the general YouTube alternatives out there? Because it seems like there's lots of horror stories about the like this yeah. YouTube. Is there anything really worth trying to go to? So. So this is the problem, is that YouTube is, it's kind of like Facebook was a couple of years ago. It is the biggest platform, and no other platform can really get off the ground to the same extent just by virtue of its hugeness. Mm -hmm. But some alternative things, I actually, uh, I think it was at Ascari's panel yesterday, there was someone up there who, they all they did was uh, Twitter videos. Um, they would just make videos and post them to Twitter. And that's great because they can go real viral and they have the same kind of general social aspect as, as YouTube, but they're a little harder to actually look back on. You can also make videos and post them to Facebook. I know there's a couple of other video sites. It just is, there's a lot of places. And honestly, if you're making a video for YouTube, there's no law that says, hey, it's only for YouTube. So if you, if you have a presence on 
Vimeo or um, I don't know any Daily, Daily Motion is that still around? Yeah, Daily Motion. Yeah. yeah. So post your stuff as as widely as you can. Um, even if it's just links to your videos, like get it out there. If you see a platform that you like, post it there and post it on YouTube. I've actually got someone who uh, who lives in China and will take my videos, dub or uh, not dub over them, sub over them with Chinese subtitles and post them to the Chinese equivalent to YouTube because they said apparently there's an audience for furry YouTube stuff. Yeah, I heard something about that. Uh, what's his name? One of the author brothers. You know who I'm talking about, right? Crash I think so. Course. Yeah. So the uh, brother was talking about how that works, and you have you as the creator, the original creator, have the option to basically say, "Oh, I'll let that video stay up, or yeah. I can take it down." No, basically they just post it with like my approval. They like send me a link when they're done. And I look at it. And I'm like, I don't know if these Chinese subtitles are right because I barely speak English, but uh, yeah, looks good. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, just as. Put it on as many sites as you can, but YouTube is kind of the big one right now. In the back. Annotate the videos. Yeah, annotations unfortunately got removed. Um, yeah, they were really useful and they just got rid of them. It kind of sucks. But, uh... No, we have, like, the... You can still find them in old videos. YouTube banners. Those are, like, little pop-up things. Yeah, now we have these, uh, little pop-in things. They, like, pop-in as a little... If you've ever seen it, it's, like, a little eye in the corner of the thing, and you, 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 you know, mouse over it, and it'll pop down with some information. Um, that's about as close as you're gonna get. And then there's the, uh, end cards, which, yeah. uh, you can never use annotations with end cards anyway, but... The end cards are like those little, uh, like, you know, next video and subscribe and stuff at the end of videos. They're actually clickable uh, links. So those are really useful to put in on your end of your videos. You can be like, watch the next video that I have, or watch this other video. Or if you're doing a collaboration with someone else, watch the video that I collabed with them on. Subscribe. Here's my Patreon. Here's You can really uh, link out pretty well with those end cards. Any other questions at all? The dirty dog in the back. <laughs> I know him. Don't worry. I'm just yeah, you, know, they, you have to deal with my funny atmosphere. I unfortunately uh, live with him. Though? He's my roommate. Uh, serious question, though, and it's not a big cover. Uh, but what was your first YouTube video, and what got and what inspired you to make it? My first YouTube video. Um, if you don't count my uh my like this is my channel video uh my first youtube god that was like a year and change ago i don't even oh i'm bad i don't even remember here hold on let me i've got a fun fun I'm thing right in front of me i'm using my resources youtube oh, not as much as mine. most of them are like put to sleep uh i ran the fluffy um, Beagle, do you remember your first video? Yeah. Oh, you can talk about it while I'm figuring mine out. My first video was Australian furries try American candy. And basically it came about, it was just an opportunity that was too big to pass up because I was going to Australia for the first time to oh, meet yeah. with uh, some of my friends down there. And I was like, you know, this is like a rare chance. I'm going to bring you guys all the crazy American things I can find and make you guys eat it. And in return, you guys are going to give me your crazy food, and I'll make my American friends eat it. So that was kind of like a two-part video that I planned. So those were my first two videos. So I'm actually remembering. Oh, by the way, this is when I was talking earlier about a banner. Very simple. Comedy, discussions, panda ramblings. That's 99% of what I'm doing. It's discussing things comedically and rambling a lot. But uh, my first video, besides the one that says first video... Uh, was, as actually, funnily enough, my most popular video, Coming Out as a Furry. Big parentheses around there, because I know the connotations of coming out, and unfortunately that's the way that we describe, describing to our friends and family that we have a silly hobby that's totally harmless. But, uh, yeah, that was actually my first discussion, because it was something, it's actually one of the reasons that I made my channel, was I always heard people like, how do I tell my family that I'm a furry? And I'm like, don't make a big deal about it. I'm not going to go into details about this but it's like just tell them you're furry it's not a big deal really guys you don't make it a big deal and they won't make it a big deal but but yeah my my initially the reason i wanted to do videos is because i had people ask me questions and i saw a lot of questions with no answers 
And so that's really where I found my calling, I guess, with for YouTube. Any other questions? Questions, questions. Oh, oh. I'll saw you first. I know like maybe three or four you for YouTubers who make a living off of it. And when I say make a living, it's like, it's a rough living. So uh, pretty much every fur YouTuber does it as a side hobby or at, at most a secondary job. Um, so it's real hard. It's even hard for like the mainstream YouTubers to, to live off of. I mean, unless you're like really, really big, multiple millions of views, multiple millions of subscribers, it's, it's tough. Uh, YouTube, you don't make a lot of money off of it, so. That's why they invented Patreon. Yeah, good old Patreon. Patreon will help. I don't think we talked about it, but yeah. Patreon, wonderful website where people can give you money to support the stuff that you do. Uh, it's really great to get you a couple extra bucks to go to these cons and, and for hardware and, and fun extra things to make your videos a little bit better. Yeah, honestly, Patreon can get you about 10 times as much revenue as YouTube Easily. ads could give you. Probably more. Yeah. <laughs> um... I think I saw Scar, you had your hand up? No, I was going to ask like, a question along the line of something to do with the Instagram. Okay. okay. You, you answered it correctly. Okay. Okay, so as far as Patreon's concerned, when should have, like, anybody, even outside the fandom, if they wanted to, set up a Patreon account? Like, do they have to wait till they hit a certain subscriber count? I, I don't or, think. As long as you are creating content and you can justify asking people for money over it, you're good to go. Yeah. A real good way to know is if someone asks you like, hey, do you have a Patreon? That's probably a good sign that you should make a Patreon. It probably means you're big enough and, and are putting out good enough stuff that people want to throw money at you, which, sure, give me your money. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, basically... Basically, either at the point where you think you are putting enough time and effort and love and care into your videos to justify someone giving you a dollar or two a month, make a Patreon. But a real easy way is if anyone asks, like, hey, do you have a way I can support you? Do you have merch? Do you have a, a Kofi? Do you have a Patreon? Do you have a something? That's probably your best time to make a Patreon. So this is also kind of a two-part question. Okay. Um, usually, two for the price one. those who do get a Patreon... What kind of rewards do you offer? And because obviously Patreon has this thing where, oh, you pay this amount of money, you get something in return. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll let you do this because I don't actually have a Patreon oh, you yet. Don't? Okay. <laughs> so a lot of um, rewards I see are uh, basically, you st the smallest one is basically a uh, shout out on your video. If you like, if you, if you have like a small number of patrons, it's not hard to give a shout out in your videos or your description or something. If you're like, up in the thousands. It can be a little rough. Yeah. But uh, other other um, low-tier rewards are typically uh, Telegram chat. I know. Yeah. I think all the patrons I donate to, you get to join a Telegram chat with. Or the, like a Discord chat. Or yeah. some kind of a little, you like a little community. You get to interact with the, with the creator and their other patrons. And it's actually really nice because I've met a lot of my close friends through um, my own or other people's patron oh, groups. Yeah. And uh, bigger tiers usually involve sometimes physical rewards like my one of um my five dollar tier is you get a postcard from me every month if you want and um some people are like if you donate like 50 or 200 dollars i'll give you a care package um monthly yeah. or like we'll hang out at a con or something yeah. or, or i'll you know we'll get dinner or something yeah. something something silly and fun yeah, um the yeah good thing about patreon is that um it just comes with the community aspect i guess like you mm -hmm. you meet other people by donating through patreon yeah, and actually one of the fun things about that is if, and this is kind of an unspoken thing about Patreon that I feel like a lot of people gloss over, um, if you have people that are willing to give you money because they think that your content is good enough, they are probably your biggest fans, and people like to justify their purchases in some regard. This is getting a little psychological, but if you give someone five bucks a month, well now you probably are more inclined to tell your friends how great they are to kind of subconsciously justify that, hey, I give this person five bucks a month. So in some regard, Patreon can be really good for building up a very loyal audience that will promote your stuff just because they want to. Um, so it can be really useful. I probably should get on that whole Patreon game. And include the nature of yeah. merchandise? Merchandise, kind of along the same line. Uh, 
I would say merchandise wait a little bit longer than a Patreon because it's easier for someone to give you a dollar a month, but it's a little harder for someone to give you $25 for a t-shirt. But same general idea. If someone asks you, hey, do you have merchandise? Should probably be making merchandise. I was more or less like saying, "Oh, if they have that already, you promote that." Oh yeah, no, same same thing. Yeah, if they if they own merchandise, they'll. Hey, look at this cool shirt I got. It's like a walking billboard. It's really great, and it's a great way for them to to support your channel and help you make better videos by getting better stuff or going to cool places. Any other questions? I think we're. Fifteen. We've got fifteen minutes, but we should probably get out of here a hair early if there's a panel yeah. afterwards. But anyway. Back. Scary. Okay. Clickbait a little bit, yeah. Bas basically, the gist was don't be disingenuous. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. What is your complete Yeah. You know, where I stand. I know exactly where you stand. You, you are an example of what not to do, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, you don't want your video to uh, describe what it, or you don't want your thumbnail to describe what your video doesn't have. Unless um, it's like the theme of your channel, like if you already built a reputation around clickbait, go for it. Yeah, you know? if you can build a reputation around clickbait, that's impressive, and uh, I want to know your secrets because that's actually pretty fun. Ascar, <laughs> we're gonna have to have a nice little discussion after this <laughs> panel here. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, this is a PG panel. This is f this is for families and actually oh, the. Most of the small children actually left, so that's probably a little bit better, but still. <laughs> yes. This is, this is my good Christian panel. Um, okay, any other questions? Yes? All right, do you know any furry YouTubers that do not monetize? And no, we're not counting the zero. That do um, not monetize. That's a good question. I'm, like, I'm starting to get a sense that, like... It's... If you get to YouTubing, it's like you have to monetize. It's mm -mm. so I uh, actually do. Oh, you do. They Ooh. turned off my my ads though because I don't have forty thousand hours of viewing because I've kind of. Been, oh, watch this guy. He's really uh, good. Um, but no, uh, I didn't monetize for long longest long period of time. I heard somewhere that monetized videos are favored a little bit in the YouTube algorithm. I don't know if that's true or not. I turned them on because I'm like, if you want, if you're someone who's okay with seeing ads, you'll, I mean, it's not going to make a difference. If you're someone who's not okay with seeing ads, you probably have an ad blocker. Um, I'm a terrible, terrible person and have an ad blocker. <laughs> I probably should turn it off for YouTube at the very least. But um, so monetization or not, I, I don't know if it makes a huge difference. Um, now with the recent change, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of our YouTube channels don't have ads just because they don't have the view hours required for them. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really up to you. I don't think it really hurts or helps your channel very much to have them on. So it's up to you. Anything else? For guys like us, for us furries, would it be, would you recommend us to, uh, if we have ad blockers, turn them off or just keep them on the same setting to try to at least help out their monetization? I mean, in general, if you, if you want to help out furry YouTubers, turning off your ad block is nice, but if you really want to help them out, if you really have a furry YouTuber that you love, more than off or more than likely if they're even remotely big they'll have a patreon or a Kofi or they'll sell merch or something and throwing them throwing us a dollar even just like a dollar means the world to to most of us because it's like oh my gosh someone actually thinks my stuff is worth giving me money for mm -hmm. it's like the biggest compliment and like I love I love 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 you know happy you know you're doing a great job compliments but like just like a dollar is like oh god yeah, see, that dollar is worth way more than, the, like, the fraction of a cent that you might get from turning your ad block off to run 30-second yeah. ad on a video. So if you're really feeling guilty about having ad blocker on, just keep it on and throw a dollar to a random furry YouTuber every month, and you're pretty much... Actually, you're probably way overpaying yeah. because <laughs> I think it's, like, a 1,000 views will get you 20 cents. So you're essentially... Paying it's, for fifty for like five thousand. Actual statistic, like a graph or something that shows this. I think they give you a, a CPM number, which is is basically your how much money you're making per thousand. 
but then like not everyone's got their ad blocker on most people skip the ads so even though it says like you'll get four dollars per thousand views it's more like you'll get 40 cents per thousand views if you're lucky so yeah no if if it's really getting on your mind throw a dollar to someone's coffee get into someone's patreon um it's not really a big deal anything else ever had a strike I've had a strike. I haven't. I've had Nintendo hit me with copyright stuff, but then they'll just take my ad my ad money. Yeah, there's a so, notice, not a strike. There's I got a notice. Between a, a claim and a strike. Yeah. So a claim is basically like the YouTube auto detects like Slap oh you on used the the wrist. copyright. You, you, um, we detected the copyrighted content, but it's the person who owns this content doesn't really care. They just might take away your ad revenue for this video. Mm -hmm. A strike is oh this it's the bad. owner. <laughs> Does not want anyone using this content. We're gonna take down this video and you get a strike. Give you you a get strike. I think they fall off after ninety days, but if you get three of them, it's like, yeah, channel's dead. Gets, everything gets deleted. Oh, yeah. it's bad. Yeah, back or up your stuff. You, or if you violate any terms of service, like you make false reports. Mm -hmm. That's actually happened to uh, JTEC oh, a couple yeah. of times. But yeah, try not to use copyrighted stuff. Try not to falsely report things. Try to just be be a good person, and you probably won't get. Copyright times. Yeah, strikes and awesome. Unless you're <laughs> Oh boy. Um, anything else? We're kind of reaching the end of our time slot here, so if there are any pressing, pressing questions, we can answer them real quick, but otherwise. Cool. Well, to those of you who stuck around, um, thank you for sticking around for our panel. It was really nice of you. Uh, it was nice to, to tell you guys stuff about YouTube and stuff, but thank you. Thanks for coming. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's definitely recording. Still can't do it, Rigo? What? I said still can't do it yet? It's like the wrong fingers are in the wrong place. I mean, your fingers are like, like, Six of mine stuck together, so I'm not surprised. I mean, Majira can literally snap this because it sounds so good. I can kind of, in my suit, it sounds like. <laughs> so I can get close. Um, I'm gonna take this brilliant display off of its thing for two seconds. I want to get started. Oh my god, your background is such trash, and I love it. It's, I mean, it's literally trash, but it's it's fantastic, and I love everything about it. All right, got a couple of minutes here before we start. No, we Wait, you haven't set yours up, Eagle? Why? What? Oh, yeah. Did you not set yours up? No, because my batteries are going to run out. Do you need a battery charger? No, Myron's going to record it. So. Yeah, I've already got it recording. I've got one if you need it. I don't, think we need, I don't think we need that yeah, many recordings. Yeah, we've got, I mean, we've got mines. That's, that's, that should be enough. These are just props. Beating sticks. <laughs> it's your weapon in case you're in case the fans get out of line. Please don't get out of line. I've got a I've got an empty water bottle. I will use it. Challenge accepted. <laughs> It'll be a very musical beating. Boom! Oh, major chord. It's like a really. It almost looks like a techie future hammer. Very expensive hammer. Oof. Please don't use it on me. I want to enjoy the rest of my convention, and I don't think having a, a camera jammed into my head is a good way to enjoy a convention. Please stop. Assault and battery. Remember the lady off the video, off of the first particular layer? The first aunt on the show? Yeah. She ended up suing this one dude that interviews in her clip because the story of her going crazy. And then the dude actually counters to it and actually won. <laughs> that's, that's kind of sad, but funny. Oh boy, people be crazy. Yeah, YouTube can get pretty serious pretty fast. Yeah, sometimes it, it hits points where I'm just like, nope. <laughs> yeah, like uh, a... This is too real. I put on a fuzzy animal costume and make a fool of myself. I can't handle this real world stuff.